Uh, what's your name and uh, what do you do? So my name is Laverne Ramshaby. I am a manager in PwC, so I'm a business consultant. Um, and I work specifically in the people and organization space. So very passionate about business and very passionate about people. So, so that's just a little bit more about me. Yeah, and um, for those that don't know, um, Levens also uh, co-leads the South Africa branch of Circle of Entrepreneurs from Johannesburg, which is super cool. Um, but yeah, no, I just wanted to to kind of talk to you about. Um, obviously, we've seen it in the light of George Floyd's uh, killing and and the wave of Black Lives Matter protest. Um, how? Yeah. Do you find navigating kind of those corporate spaces as a, as a minority in PwC and also kind of going against the grain as an entrepreneur? Um. Yeah. So I think it's, it's, it's actually really cool that we're having our chat today um, because it's actually youth day in South Africa. So um, it, it's a big day for us where we kind of remember, you know, what happened um and 44 years ago on june 16 in, um where we had youth almost you know use their voice to to really challenge the apartheid system that we had in south africa specifically from an education space um and i think it's fitting that we're having the conversation today because we are talking about you know the minority um really coming together and being a force for good and challenging society um, and uniting in that to say it's actually not okay you know some of the stuff that's happening around the world i think you know the killing of george floyd has really i don't think it's anything new um i don't think it's anything that any one of us are almost you know surprised by i think this has been happening for a really long time i think it's just really sad that it takes someone dying and people getting hurt for, for the world kind of to, to awaken and say, we have a really big issue that we, we now know that we can't keep happening. Um, and I think that it's just time for us to say enough is enough. Um, and, you know, if I, I think about it from a corporate perspective, um, you know, the role that young people have in corporates um, and the role my voice has as a black person um, is crucial in terms of changing um, society and changing the way we work and using our voices in corporates to really make a difference. Mm. Um, so yeah, I think that it's, it, it's, it's time for us. And I think the message of Youth Day for South Africa is really around using our voices to, to drive change um, and, and to take action because this is our future. Um, mm. And as, as a minority, um, it's important for us to take a stand and say enough is enough. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. And I think um, like exactly what you were saying about kind of racism, it's not something, it's always existed and it's almost part of your lived experience and you're just kind of going through life trying to put up with it. And something yeah. Will Smith was saying was like, it's nothing new, it's just being filmed. Um, yeah. And so I think it's super important that especially with like amazing the amazing work you're doing um in pwc that um the youth uh, feel that they can use the platform of a, of a yeah. large corporate to amplify their voices right to ensure that they're yeah. represented in in the decision making and in terms of empowering the youth to kind of take social change into their own hands um mm. and i actually wanted to ask you about kind of the work you're doing leading like the pwc africa millennial forum and like sitting on the answer and all of these cool things <laughs> um, <but> yeah. <laughs> yeah so um look i don't think any success can be achieved by one person alone um you know as a consultant you always taught you fly alone you die alone um one voice cannot cannot change society um, I think with the role that I have in my organization, um, you know, really being part of a, a forum where young people um, use social entrepreneurship to not only solve problems in our business, but solve problems within our society that benefit our community. Um, and I think that a lot of corporates are now starting to focus their energy in those areas and really they organizations are seeing the power that young people have 
um, and the ideas that we have, um, and they're starting to tap into that. Um, I think my journey at PwC has been one from a social entrepreneurship perspective that that has been awesome. Um, I think I, we, we are fortunate enough that we have leadership that does listen. Um, we have leadership that is passionate about diversity, that's passionate about giving black people and young people a voice. So we really are leveraging those platforms and those relationships, you know, to make to make a difference. But if I think outside of PwC, um, I think I'm also part of One Young World. I'm not quite sure if you've heard about it before, but part of One Young World. Um, and, and, you know, it, it's, it's also the same mentality of coming together and we have purpose to make a difference. Um, and we have an obligation to challenge the norms that tell us certain things are okay when they're not. Mm. I was listening to a podcast or a talk by Trevor Noah uh, last week sometime. And he was almost saying that, you know, protest is something that can never be explained or something that's not right. You know, you can't tell someone how to protest. You can't tell someone how to act towards something that is fundamentally challenging who they are. Um, and I think that, you know, sometimes, and you mentioned it before, we born, when we born, we obviously born into certain communities and we're born into society that have pre-existing um, structures in place that we didn't necessarily have a say in. Um, and we need to be able to come together to really make a difference and use our voices to protest, protest things that are not right. Mm -hmm. um, and that's so powerful and it, it links so nicely with, for me, with social entrepreneurship because as a social entrepreneur, you're always challenging the existing. You, you're mm. challenging to make something better, to make something, um, you know, work in a more efficient and effective way, but to have a positive social impact on something. And when you're challenging the norm, it's always going to be hard. It's always going to be tough. It's always going to be met with resistance. Otherwise, it wouldn't be change. Um, so I think, you know, it, it's really as, as young people, as, as, as a black person, as um, a youth um, it, and a social entrepreneur, it's, it's really important for us to remember why we're doing something and really important for us to remember, you know, the purpose and the aim that we're trying to change because we all should be aiming to, to bring about good, positive social change. But it's sometimes hard. It's not easy. And I think, you know, if we, we talk about bringing change within an organization or challenging an existing infrastructure or challenging police brutality in the states or challenging racial inequalities, it's a tough battle to fight um, because there are fundamental things that are wrong with it. Um, so unity is very important and using our voice is really important and acting is really important. Yeah, and I absolutely agree. I think... Um especially as a black entrepreneur, um, it's so important to recognize your worth, right? To be that, be self-reflective and unapologetically yourself and just realize that the settings that you're operating in weren't optimized for you to be there and not yeah. taking that as like a, as, as an obstruction, but just seeing that as a, as almost incumbent upon you having gotten to those um, institutions, whether that's educational institutions or, or corporates, um, to really use your voice um, to, you know, draw attention to the the, the main um, inequalities, whether that is um, in terms of education, housing, health. It's we all know that institutional racism is spread across sectors and doesn't necessarily impact you know one group or one country, but it's actually a global problem. But if you're yeah. just able to, you know. Um, make a difference in your own community in whatever way however small um that will yeah. encourage others to do the same um and i think that's yeah. the, the, the purpose of a lot of the content i'm trying to put together with, with toi is just making people aware of and be you know give visibility to you know black entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs just changing the game in their sectors doing their own thing um working really hard and yeah. i think it's only when you you are able to provide that success case or that role model um, that number one um, youth will see others that look like them um, from you know their background if they're a minority and would think 
you know, if they can make that change, why can't I? He's 21, yeah. he's 30 or 25, yeah. and they're driving this initiative, which is super purpose-driven yeah. and impactful in their community. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's like, it's, it's, it's super, super important. And I actually wanted to ask about kind of um, your leadership style, because a lot of like, a lot of the things you're doing with like, you know, coordinating ambassadors of One Young World and like all of these cool projects you're leading, um, how do you sort of reflect on like your strengths as a leader and and the way you operate in terms of community building and helping others um, to almost use your soft skills to drive that change both within and outside of PwC? Yeah, a tough question. Um, <laughs> good question, though. I really believe, uh, and I think this for, for me, leadership is is quite important. Um, I read a quote the other day, and if I think about it from a from a work setting, uh, it, I read a quote the other day, and I'm not I, I probably won't be able to quote it directly, so I'll give you a summary um, where it says that a boss tells people what to do, a leader brings people along the journey with them. Um, and for me, that's really important as a leader, whether I'm leading my team or I'm I'm leading the Southern Africa One Young World Network, or I'm leading different forums um, within PwC. For me, it's about being and practicing servant leadership. And that means that I understand that as a leader, my role is not to have the answers all the time. Um, my role is not to be the shining limelight where the spotlight is on you all the time. Um, I think my leadership style is really one where I invest in growth and I really see myself as an enabler. Um, and I think that's, that's almost how I lead. Um, if I think about my one young world community that I look after, my role is to enable um, really, and they, they're awesome, they are so inspiring, they are really out there in the communities making a difference. Um, and the majority of, of the one young world ambassadors that we have in the Southern Africa region are black. Um, and they take on challenges like racial quality. Uh, they take on um, tasks like gender-based violence. Um, they take on tasks um, of, you know, Afrophobia. That's something that we experience in Africa where that's black and black. And even in the context of black, we still have differentiators that we give ourselves um, within one one group and it, it's crazy it's crazy that we even we differentiate ourselves you know within within one race group um so really i see myself as as an enabler as a servant leader as someone who's saying that i believe in you um and i'm going to help you achieve what you need to achieve and i think that you know just taking it back to black lives matter and and black minority we need to believe in one another and we need to be able to support one another with whatever we have at our disposals um, because it's about a community. It's not about one person making a difference. Together we win um, and we achieve the same goal. So that's a bit about my leadership style. Um, I don't know about yours. <laughs> what, what's yours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's quite aligned. I think it's really about meeting people where they are. And yeah being empathetic and having humility to bring people along with you. And so when I look at a bunch of the things I've been doing in the past, whether it's with Project Access and educational inequality and building teams, um, it's really about having you know, a clear vision of what you, what you believe you want the world to be. And that's yeah. a really good step. And, that's, and it has to be something very bold that people you know, get inspired by it. Um, gets them up in the morning, gets them excited, but also um, having a clear plan, right, of how you get from A to B before you worry about C. It's about making sure that there is that collective input into yeah. decision making. It's not like some superhero or, or yeah. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> changing the world all on its, it, that's just not the way it, it works. It's about really yeah. working with others um, and, you know, I recognize I'm very strong on, let's say, public speaking and, and you know, talking to people and pitching, but I'm not necessarily as good in, in other things, maybe technical skills. Or, and so simple, what I do is I try to 
bring people who are a lot smarter than me, right? <laughs> to, to kind of help um, build the team to be as strong as it can and not feeling as though that is a detraction to your skill set, but just yeah. seeing that as, as something complementary. And I think, yeah, 100%. yeah, your point about um, working together as a black founder or, or as a black entrepreneur is super, super important. I think if you are able to build that ecosystem of people who, you know, care about the work they're doing and are very conscious about the impact they're having on the world, but also from a purpose perspective of like, okay, what are the big societal issues and how is the work I'm doing? in some way contributing to making a difference if you're able to you know harness the you know both the scale and the size of these institutions as an agent of change within it and work with you know black entrepreneurs who are also face you know structural yeah. and racism and all of these institutional factors external to the organization but are just able to combine those two to, to drive change whether that is in you know um the future of work whether that's in education whether that's in gender empowerment or racial equality um, then we can move towards a, a, a world where you know equity is is the key and representation the, and justice are upheld, not just in words but in action, right? And I think that's super mm. super cool about about kind of the mm. way I'm really I'm really hopeful as a as a as a youth person. Like I I know you know these all of these um, issues in the world aren't going to go away overnight, but I think um, if we can build a collective movement and this is what you know circle of entrepreneurs was founded to do it's about ensuring that wherever you come from whatever your race whatever you believe we're mm. able to activate you know and enable others to feel that they their their voices matter and the initiatives they're driving within their organization um yeah so i actually i wanted to kind of just wrap up and ask you um kind of three practical tips that you'd have right for an entrepreneur or a budding entrepreneur who you know maybe has an idea um but doesn't necessarily know how to, yeah. to, to go from idea to implementation and delivery yeah um three tips um let's see if i can summarize in terms of the experience i have um i think the first one is go for it um, if you have an idea, go for it. Put your heart and soul and passion into it. Um, I think we so badly need that entrepreneurship mindset. And, and I talk from it from a world perspective, but I, I talk about it closer to, to home and to South Africa. Is we need people to start their own businesses, to, to drive change in society. So if you have an idea and you're passionate about it, there's start just start it doesn't matter if your your step is small or big just start um i think the second the second tip that i have is really build your ecosystem around you it's, it's exactly what you were saying right now find people within your communities um you know that we have so many platforms right now from a social media perspective find people to be part of that ecosystem that's able to guide and, and mentor you. Um, I think we need to get better at mentoring one another and guiding one another and supporting one another. Um, so, so that probably would be my, my second step. Um, probably my, my third one would be, you know, failure is okay. Um, I think you are never going to get it right, right up in the beginning. Um, and failure teaches you what to do better next. Um, and you can only go from strength to strength. So failing is okay. Uh, in the consulting world, we always say it's not about getting to the end point. It's, it's progress. It's progress that we're making. It, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I think, yeah, those would be my top three. Um, I think go for it. Um, build your ecosystem. Be mindful about the people you surround yourself with on your entrepreneurial journey. And, and the third one is accept failure and build from it. So I think those would be my top three.